Welcome to the Idle Framework updated course from Cyberry IT. My name is Daniel Riley. I'm your subject matter expert on the Idle Framework. I've been studying and applying IT service management and specifically the Idle Framework since 2013. That's about five years. I started off in Tier 1 and Tier 2 tech support in a call center. I moved on to being a developer and then up to a project manager, finally into the information security management field. Um, now, in all of these positions and all of these different levels, uh, I have found a use for ITIL to help me manage and, and define the services for the companies that I was working for. Um, this course is structured so that each section of the framework is covered in two videos. The first video uh, consists of the objectives and the processes that you will use during that phase of the framework. Uh, the second video focuses on the key performance indicators, how and what to measure to understand the effectiveness of your idle implementation. The final section of the course deals with the practical aspects of applying what you've learned here in the real world, uh, where we all know things can get messy sometimes. Let's start with a discussion of what is the idle framework and why do you want to use it? Um, the IDLE framework defines best practices for delivering valuable IT services. Uh, these days, most companies use some form of IT service as part of their delivery. This may be software as a service, uh, infrastructure as a service, uh, things like that. These services need to be clearly defined, and that's what the IDLE framework aims to do. Um, it defines best practices to start and maintain the services. Um, now, service-oriented IT management can be seen as sort of a philosophy uh, which is oriented towards markets, then services. Um, it just consists of a life cycle and which is broken up into processes. No, this is kind of based all on the plan, do, check, act mentality, um, wherein you plan what it is you would like to accomplish and what you need to do to accomplish those goals. You then set about accomplishing those goals in the do and along the way you make sure to check that what you're doing is having the effect that you thought it would. Um, once you check you act on that check. So if the things you're doing are achieving your goals you may continue to do them. If your check reveals that the things you're doing are not in fact, meeting your goals, you may choose to change courses. Um, this is, of course, iterative. So once you've acted, you start to replan what your next set of objectives will be. Now, all of these plan, do, check, act cycles need to be focused on meeting client needs. Um, that's what we mean when we say that the idle framework is market focused. Um, your clients are the market and the market will change their needs and your business needs to adapt to those. Now we're going to explicitly define our services uh, which is better than having implicit services. Explicitly defined services have service level agreements, they have documentation, um, and they they're clearly defined whereas implicit services are just kind of ad hoc. They're delivered as needed, not really structured. All of these things are going to be done in an iterative service life cycle, which I'll show you. So this outer ring is our continual process improvement uh, and service management ring. This contains all of the sub processes. Now zooming to the center, what makes up the core of our service life cycle is our service strategy. This is going to be informed by our market needs, as we've said. Uh, once we've formed a strategy for our service, we'll move into the service design phase. In the service design phase, we're gra gathering our requirements uh, and our use cases uh, for that service, and we're starting to structure the documentation. Once we've got all of that settled, we'll pass it on to our development and operations teams, or DevOps, and we will 
begin the service transition phase. This is kind of the transition between a service design and the service oper operation or the idea of a service and the actual service. Uh, in the service transition phase is, is where you'll see a lot of the software development lifecycle happen. Finally, in service operation, we're using the service that we've developed to actually meet client needs and we're getting feedback from our clients as to their, their opinions on that service. Uh, we use that to inform our strategy going forward. We update our strategy based off of our feedback, um, which starts a new iteration with a new service design or a service design for an update. Now, when you begin applying the idle framework, um, you may not have a lot of service management defined. And at this level, we call this a non-existent implementation. Um, at this point, the service management ideals aren't really being applied. There aren't um, documented processes and things. At level one, this is an initial implementation. Um, at this implementation, you've started to define the the processes they're more ad hoc and disorganized but at least people can agree on what the processes are at level two you have a repeatable implementation this is where processes are intuitive and provide in most cases uh, deterministic and repeatable results now that's not always the case but for a large number of cases you want your your results to be repeatable um, and, and measurable once you have repeatable and measurable results, you'll start to move into what's called a defined Im implementation. Uh, this is where processes and documents provide standard procedures and clearly define, define the results that you can expect to see from each phase. Uh, once you have those, you uh, move into a managed implementation and managed implementations are really focused on the key performance indicators. Um, this is where you begin to measure and analyze uh, each phase of the framework. You use that information to move into level five. Level five is an optimized uh, implementation. In an optimized implementation, you're using your KPIs from level four to inform your strategy and to move forward in an efficient and effective manner. So in 2017, Axelos, who are the owners of the IDLE framework, announced an update. Um, now the core of the update is going to remain the same. Uh, so you don't have to worry about relearning a bunch of stuff. Uh, the ideas and processes are all going to stay the same. They're just fleshing out with more information about the practical adoption of IDLE. So what that means is how does IDLE work with your development operations group? And how does IDLE work with your continuous delivery system? Um, a large focus is actually going to be placed in this class and in the update um, on cloud services and how IDLE can be used with cloud services uh, to manage rapidly changing environments. Now, if you've already been certified uh, under the previous framework, that's okay. Your current certifications are gonna still be recognized under the new scheme. Uh, this goes back to the core elements remaining the same. Um, it would be worth going and looking at the updated materials to see the new structures though. If you're not currently certified and you are looking to get certified, uh, there are several levels of certification which you might be interested in knowing about. Um, at the foundation level, this is the beginning exam. This shows a theoretical knowledge of the beginning levels of IDLE certification. From there, you move on to the practitioner level. Once you take your theoretical knowledge from the foundation level and you start to apply it in your organization, uh, you become a practitioner. After a year or so, you will have gained knowledge uh, required to, to gain the practitioner level. From there, you can move up to the intermediate level. And now at the intermediate level, it breaks into a modular framework. Um, at this level, the modules that you take will be directly related to the service organizations that you're in. So if your company
provide software as a service, you will take a separate set of modules than if you are an infrastructure as a service company. Uh, from there, you move up to the expert level. Um, the expert level has to show uh, and demonstrate a knowledge of the idle scheme in its entirety. And at next level from that is the master level. Now, a master has to be able to demonstrate a knowledge of the idle scheme in its entirety as well, but they also must be able to explain and justify how they've personally selected and applied these in their own organizations. With that, we've come to the end of our first video. I'd like to thank you for watching. You can reach me on cybery.it. Username is twarter, T-W-A-R-T-E-R. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you at the next video.